Swiss pro climber Caro North and her friends embarked on a new adventure. Their destination, Antarctica. It's quite funny coming here skiing in December because it's the summer right now here. We arrived there with ski bags, like tons of gear and all this stuff. <laughs> People really didn't get it on what we were going to do. The expedition team get ready for the journey. Together with Swiss mountain guide Guillaume Martina, Caro North plans to travel to the Antarctic Peninsula aboard the sailboat Jonathan II, helmed by Dutch captain Mark van de Vig. The experienced mountaineers hope to climb some of the peaks of the southernmost continent. But before they do that, they must cross the Drake Passage, body of water separating South America from the Antarctic. Before this trip, I was quite afraid of the sailing and crossing the Drake Passage because the only experiences I have are some sailing courses when I was a kid. And by then, in the Bretagne, our boat flipped when he did the sailing course, so I was super afraid about the boat flipping in the Drake. This was like my big, big fear. The Drake Passage, known for its harsh weather and rough water, is one of the most notorious sea passages. When we started the Drake Passage, I think I got scared. I was really scared, actually. I felt bad on this boat. I started throwing up. When you cross the Drake, some people, they could say, freak out about it. To be so far away from land, and then this movement of the boat, and, and, and you expect it from some people, but you won't expect it from Guillaume. He goes to, the, finds the highest rock in the Alps, and then jumps off in, in a wingsuit. Yeah, it's fears, and fears are difficult to explain. In my opinion, sailors are a bit crazy. I practice quite a few extreme sports. I fly a wingsuit, I do alpinism, climbing, and downhill mountain biking. I've tried kind of everything I could in Switzerland. But for me, it's much more extreme to take this boat and cross the Drake in such rough seas. When we go on a trip to climb a mountain, it's one or two days. Sailors have to stay on course to take watches. You always need someone who watches, even in bad weather. You can't stay inside. You have to go out and take the waves in the face. It was tough to be in such a confined space altogether, and the crossing lasted four days at a stretch without a chance to go for a walk or to unwind. We were impatient to arrive in the Antarctic, but we first made it to a small island called Deception Island. I got out of the boat thinking we made it to Antarctica. I expected to see mountains, but it was only two small bumps in a volcano crater. We weren't there yet. Come on now. It might not be Antarctica yet, but Deception Island offers the team a welcome protection from the approaching bad weather front. We were stuck at Deception Island for two days. We were sheltered from the wind there, waiting for a weather window and the right direction of wind to sail the last stretch and finally make it to the Antarctic Peninsula. That's why it's called Deception Island. If you don't get the right winds, you can't go any further. Deception Island is the only refuge on the Antarctic route. 120 kilometers away from the destination. Sailors await the end of storms and the passage of icebergs here. After two days of waiting, the captain weighs the anchor for the final crossing.
On the last part of the sailing route, the expedition is blessed with better weather. And with every nautical mile, Caro North and the team get more excited, wondering what awaits them ahead. And finally, they come into sight, the ice-covered mountains of the southernmost continent. When we arrived in Antarctica, the wind was so strong and the bolt sailed very fast. We were in the midst of a storm and the icebergs. It was panic on board in the middle of the night. He had planned to drop anchor at a certain bay, but when we arrived, it was full of ice and we had to sail for another five hours at night in between the icebergs. Du coup, ils ont dû encore faire cinq heures de navigation en plus dans les icebergs et la nuit. I'm checking the passage through the icebergs. We can't see enough from the deck. It's a labyrinth. When we woke up the next day, it was calm. I told myself, finally, we're there. À l'ancre avec le bateau. Moi, je me suis dit, ah, enfin. When we arrived, it was really beautiful to see the icebergs, penguins and mountains appearing in the distance. There's lots of snow there. We were finally there and ready with our skis, but the weather was bad. of bad weather like I didn't realize how bad the weather can be down there I mean and if you don't have any visibility you cannot go at home in the Alps we have so good maps so even if you don't have visibility you have a chance of going into the mountains here where you don't have any maps and you have like super big glaciers with like super open and big crevasses so you definitely want to like leave the boat with visibility and then the next point is you have to get on shore and often you have this like big break off so you can't get on shore because it's just super broken and so you have to find a ramp where you can land with the zodiac and then the next thing is if the wind changes direction or gets stronger again then mark might not be able to get us we're trying to find a way to reach the shore we found an awesome mountain, but we haven't found an access point. One time we saw this really, really cool mountain we were looking at and it looked super inspiring and interesting and we found a way where we could go on shore. But Mark was telling us, if you go on shore here, I'm pretty sure I can't get you back on the boat again. So Caro and the group are stuck on the boat for two days. The currents and the icebergs prevent them from accessing the long-awaited mountains. It's a challenging situation to be in. This is pretty hard because we have been traveling on the boat so many days. You kind of get a bit frustrated, to be honest, because I see all these beautiful mountains and I'm trapped on the boat. I mean, it's not trapped, I like the boat life, but at one point you just have to get out. And then suddenly in the fog, we saw this like beautiful island, which was just a single mountain. It just looked super beautiful and just popped out of the clouds and like, okay, let's get ready for skiing. When we landed and stepped in the snow, we figured how terrible the snow was. This mountain is just super beautiful and I don't think it has been skied before because you have to really search for this line and you have to be like a really motivated skier. But actually, who cares? Like for us, we didn't have any information. So it's like being the first ones going there. and. For me, it was just important having this amazing day up there with Guillaume and skiing it. The reward for all their efforts? An unforgettable and unique descent down to the ice-covered sea of Antarctica. Skiing next to a colony of penguins isn't something many people get to experience in their lifetime. 
At breakfast the next morning, the mood in the team is excellent as the crew sets off for new destinations. We left Switzerland saying to ourselves, nice, there are icebergs. It's ice, we have ice axes, so we'll try to climb on them. The giant icebergs which have broken away from the coastal glaciers can prove hazardous. The captain didn't agree to let us climb an iceberg because it was his responsibility to bring us back alive, with or without the smile. Entièrement en lit à bon port avec le sourire ou pas le sourire, mais de nous ramener en tout cas. Everyone has quite some experience in the mountains, and there's like too many experts, and everyone wants to do it his way, and then it's really hard to get on a point together and make a decision, which sometimes is frustrating because you have your idea, you think it's the best, the other one has his idea, you think it's the best, and then yeah, how to make a choice? I mean, having to adapt to this too quite a challenge. In the Antarctic, safety is paramount. A day where I didn't expect anything, and then it was nearly one of the best days. Like, this is Antarctica. You never know what the day will bring. We were lucky to have a sunny day to go on one of these mountains. They're awesome towers, very aesthetic, all covered with snow and ice with gigantic cornices. For Caro and Gwillem, their dream has come true. A demanding but also rewarding ski tour to the Fief Range on Vinky Island. It's unique. I mean, I've been on so many mountains and to so many places in the world. But this was definitely like a complete other level. Something complete different from everything else. And so the crew finally say goodbye to the extraordinary Antarctic Peninsula. <laughs>